Today, we have our first What If collab on this channel. Joining me today is going to be Omak446 Productions. Hey guys, Omak446 Productions here. Omak is going to be telling today's story on this channel, and I'll be telling part 2's story over on his channel. So, make sure you guys go subscribe to his channel to see part 2. So, without further ado, take it away, Omak. In Universe 6, the G.O.D. Lord Champa has begun his quest for the Super Dragon Balls far earlier than in canon, due to him hearing about Dragon Balls being used on Planet Namek in Universe 7. After some research, he discovers Dragon Balls even greater than those on Namek, and has gone in search of them. He has found 6 out of 7 so far, and believes that the last one is most likely in Beerus' possession and maybe he can auction it off with him. So Champa and Vados head to Beerus' planet and find he's still asleep. Of course Champa wants the Super Dragon Ball now, as he goes to wake up Beerus himself. Beerus of course is not very happy to have been woken up and he goes to attack Champa, but luckily Whis is able to stop Beerus before he can do any harm. Beerus and Champa then have their food competition as normal, but Beerus loses this time. Since he hasn't been to Earth yet, Beerus gets very angry at Champa, but since he can't attack him directly without breaking any rules, he suggests they hold a tournament of the universe's strongest fighters, so Beerus can prove his, his universe is the better. Champa isn't one to back down from a challenge, so he accepts Beerus's offer. In fact, he's so excited that he forgets about the Super Dragon Balls, and instantly leaves with Vados. Beerus and Whis then discuss if they can find any, strong, any other strong fighters, Beerus then suggests Frieza, as he's very powerful, but Whis tells him that Frieza was recently killed by a Saiyan on Earth. Beerus is shocked to learn that Frieza was killed, and by a Saiyan of all things, since he believed them to be extinct. By the mention of a Saiyan though, Beerus begins to remember the strange dream he had about them. A Super Saiyan maybe? No, it was something different, but he can't quite remember it. Beerus asks Whis if the Saiyan who killed Frieza is on Earth now, and Whis says that he is. So they then set course for Earth immediately. After a few hours, Beerus and Whis arrive at Kami's lookout and find the scene who they are looking for. Future Trunks, currently waiting for the Cell Games. Of course nobody knows who these two are, even Piccolo with his knowledge on gods. Beerus then tells Trunks on how he is so impressed that he managed to take down Frieza, and that he wants to test him out. Trunks is obviously very confused, since this guy just showed up out of nowhere, and knows that he killed Frieza, plus he can't even sense any energy from him, which is very concerning. Of course, Trunks would eventually accept and goes to fight with Beerus. Trunks is nothing to Beerus in his base form, and Beerus says he should power up to that Super Saiyan state if he wants to stand the chance. Trunks is getting very annoyed and transforms, but even with this, he's nothing against Beerus. Beerus says that he's very let in with his performance, and he would kill them all if it wasn't for this damn tournament. Trunks mistakes this tournament for the Cell Games and asks if he's here to take on Cell. Beerus says he has no idea who Cell is, but he asks if he's powerful. Trunks tells him that Cell is beyond belief in power, but maybe his Saiyan ally Goku could defeat him. Hearing that there are two pe people more powerful than Trunks, Beerus tells him to bring these two here, and he may not destroy the planet. Trunks complies and leaves to find Goku. Once he tracks them down, Trunks tells Goku that two strange men have appeared on the lookout and are looking for Goku and Cell. Goku is interested in by this and goes to check it out with Trunks, but realizes he can't use instant transmission due to the two not giving off any key. Could they be a, a second set of androids? Maybe. And this concerns Trunks greatly. Goku gets Gohan and the three Saiyans go to look at and find Beerus. Beerus picks up that Goku is in a whole other league than Trunks was, but unfortunately he's still no match for him. Goku is blown away that there is a fighter who seems to be even stronger than even Cell, which gets him very excited. Beerus isn't very happy and tells the group to bring Cell to him at once, as Goku said Cell is even stronger than he is. So Goku teleports to Cell and asks if he'd like to do a quick fight with someone who may be even stronger than himself. 
this catches Cell's attention and standing around for 10 days is beginning to get a, a bit boring. So he says he'll go with Goku as long as it's not a trick. It's not luckily and Goku brings Cell to Beerus. Cell doesn't fare much better against, against Beerus either and Cell's very angry with himself for not being able to, to hit him. Him with being the perfect being after all. Beerus is very annoyed now but then it hits him. The Super Saiyan God. If these Saiyans had this power, then maybe they could do a lot better in the Universal Tournament and take in Champa's warriors. Of course, the Saiyans have no idea what the Super Saiyan God is, and since they're running out of options, Goku suggests they use the Dragon Ball and ask Shaiwan how it can be done. Gohan says that that might not be a, a great idea since Cell is still here and they're going to need the Dragon Balls to undo the damage he's caused. Beerus says that he is going to cause a lot more damage if they don't use the Dragon Balls. Ben gets the Dragon Balls and summons Shenron and the group learn about how they're going to need a ritual to create the Super Saiyan God. Of course they would, they would only be one Saiyan short to complete the ritual. They currently have Goku, Vegeta, Trunks, Gohan and Baby Trunks, but no other Saiyans. This is when Cell pipes in and tells them that he has Saiyan cells inside of him. So maybe if he joins them in the ritual it can, it can work. All of the Saiyans don't want anything to do with Cell and refuse to let him join in. But Beerus snaps and says if they don't be become this god, he's going to completely wipe out the entire planet and everything on it. The Saiyans reluctantly decide to let Cell join in the ritual and now they mustn't choose on, on who they're going to give form to. Goku was originally going to get it, but he declines and says that Gohan would be a far more better candidate. As in the time chamber, Gohan showed off amazing power that far exceeded Goku's. So if they give it to Gohan, they'd be able to at least match for Beerus. Gohan doesn't want this power of course, but knows it's the only way to save everybody he cares about and accept it. With Gohan becoming the Super Saiyan God, Gohan is extremely powerful, although not as strong as Goku was in the Battle of Gods movie or saga. Gohan still puts up an amazing fight between him and Beerus. And Cell is extremely jealous that even though he's perfect now, there are still those who, who are way above him in power, and it's just not fair. Eventually, the Battle of Gods ends with Beerus telling Gohan that he fought a lot better than he thought he would, and with more training, this group could, could be able to hold their own in the tournament. And he offers to bring the Saiyans along, so they can all get the God form and train under him and Whis. The Saiyans would be happy to, but they still worry about Cell. Cell then says that he's willing to cancel the Cell games and go off with it with Beerus as well. Everybody is shocked by this, but Cell explains that he needs to become stronger than he is now and reach, and reach strengths that even rival Beerus to prove that he is the most perfect being in existence. The Z Fighters wouldn't want Cell to go alone, as if he gets stronger then, then there will be no hope. Except it's Beerus's call, and the more strong fighters they have to fight Champa, the better. So the Saiyans, along with Cell, leave to go and train with Beerus and Whis. So, in part one, we left off with Beerus and Whis taking future Trunks, Vegeta, Gohan, Goku, and Cell inside the hyperbolic time chamber to train for the Universal Tournament. The Saiyans would most likely tell Beerus about the hyperbolic time chamber where they can train for one year and a day, and since Beerus and Whis need as much time as possible, to train all these guys up, I'm sure they'd go along with it. And I can already hear you guys typing down in the comments below that the time chamber can only hold two people. But remember this, Whis is a walking deus ex machina, so he could most likely manipulate the room or something to have it fit more than two people. The strongest one so far would be Gohan, since he had already learned Super Saiyan God, but he hadn't fully mastered it. But by the end of Whis's training, Gohan would be able to use it at will. And on top of that, he can also briefly access to Super Saiyan Blue transformation. As for the others, they all access and master Super Saiyan God. But for Cell, Cell unlocks something far different. Cell unlocks a fusion of Super Saiyan God and Frieza's Golden transformation. Meet Golden Super Saiyan God Cell. This is very random, I know. But the reason behind this is, when Cell would unlock his Super Saiyan God form due to his Saiyan cells, his Frost Demon Cell from both Frieza and King Cold would respond by unlocking their race's most powerful form, that being the Golden Form. Then the cells would almost combine and produce Super Saiyan God Golden Cell. 
Everyone, including Beerus and Whis, would be left in disbelief at the immense strength and potential the bio-android has to offer. Cell would yell, Perfect perfection! Finally! Beerus began to laugh to himself under his breath. Could this android on his own take down Champa's entire team? Beerus is curious and challenges the android, and they begin to fight. Beerus is shocked that this mortal creation is making the God of Destruction go over 90% of his power. And after a while, Cell would start to overpower the god, until Whis cuts the battle short. Whis begins to smile at Cell, because he thinks he may have just found his new god of destruction. After the fight, the Saiyans would train and get stronger together. Whis would introduce Cell into the possibility of him becoming a god, of which Cell would jump at. And Whis would begin Cell's god of destruction training. During this time, Beerus would be sleeping in one of the beds inside the time chamber, disappointed in himself that some nobody could overthrow him. Now, I'm going to say that their training would most likely be the exact same it was right before the original Universe 6 tournament, where the group spends three years inside the hyperbolic time chamber, or three days on the outside. The Saiyans would return to their families and friends, and Cell would go with Beerus and Whis to continue his training to be the God of Destruction of Universe 7. This week of peace would pass almost instantaneously, and Beerus, Whis, and Cell would teleport from Beerus' world to Capsule Corp. Future Trunks and Vegeta would walk outside to greet the trio, whereas Goku and Gohan would use instant transmission to get to Capsule Corp. The Saiyans catch up with each other, but their attention would quickly divert to Cell. He was still in his god form. It appears he has done what Goku and Gohan are doing before they were meant to fight Cell. Whis would explain that during this week, Whis had been lecturing the god in training on the history of the universe, and that there are other universes and more powerful beings. Whis goes on to explain that Cell is probably stronger than the entire team put together as of now, which heavily scares them. But the angel would then say that they came here to announce the retirement of Lord Beerus, and the birth of Lord Cell. Beerus's God of Destruction uniform is quickly replaced by his race's standard clothing, and Cell gains the ex-god's clothes. But another thing happens to Beerus. His age is rapidly catching up with him. But his youth is restored by Whis until the end of the tournament. After that, Whis would have to revoke his youth, which will unfortunately kill him. This is because once the roles are swapped, Beerus is stripped of his immortality, making Lord Cell immortal, heavily pleasing his freedom cells. Vegeta begins to yell at Whis, asking why Cell is suddenly a god, and Angel explains that on Beerus's, well, now Cell's planet, Cell and Beerus went all out on each other, and the bio android came out on top, with Beerus on the floor. Nobody can believe this. It was technically only a couple days ago that Beerus defeated Cell with one gut punch, and now, almost a complete opposite. Cell announced that Beerus would be taking his place in the tournament, as if Cell were to fight, it would be horribly unfair. Luckily, even without his godly powers, Beerus is still in no shape or form weak, so I'm going to say that he's currently just below Super Saiyan God Goku. But remember, this Super Saiyan God Goku is much stronger than the one in the original canon. The now mortal Beerus begins to walk over towards his Saiyans, and they are still in shock. Lord Cell would announce that today is the day, the day the Universe 7 annihilates Universe 6 in the Universal Tournament. The team all hold on to Whis's back, and they're off. 20 minutes would pass, and the team land on the planet. Lord Champa would turn around, expecting to see Beerus and his team of weak Universe 7 mortals. But when he turns around, a cold chill runs down his spine. Champa runs over to Beerus and asks what happened, and the ex-god explains everything. Champa would go over to the far taller and stronger Cell to greet and congratulate him on his success. But the bio android would simply ignore the cat god. This angers Champa. How dare this newbie ignore a senior god of destruction like himself? Out of rage, Champa throws a left hook onto the face of Cell, but his arm is caught and Cell delivers a knee to the quite large stomach of the god cat, sending him flying across the arena. Whis gives Cell a look of shame, which Cell responds to with an apology. It seems that Cell has a substantial amount of respect towards the angel, unlike Beerus who took him for granted. The tournament begins with the Universe 6 team showing themselves. Their team is mostly the same, except for a couple of minor differences. That being, Frost is far weaker than he would be in canon, since this is again, years before the original tournament took place. So he'd most likely be at Freeze's level in the Namek arc. Also, there is no Kaba, since I believe he'd still be too young and too weak here. So Champa would instead recruit the captain of the Saiyan Defense Forces, Renzo. Renzo is by no means a weak Saiyan, but compared to where Kappa was in the original, he's basically nothing. The first match would be between Goku and Botomo as normal, which would play it normally, 
but this time going up, up against Frost, Frost would be a cakewalk, even when Frost unleash, unleashes his final form. But Frost does still play dirty and poisons Goku, eliminating him. Next up is Trunks, and he doesn't play games since he saw Goku get eliminated straight away, and he takes out Frost. And with Frost there right away, this means no one finds out that Frost actually poisoned Goku, which means Goku is eliminated for real and has no chance of being brought back. Next up is Megeta, and Trunks has a really difficult time against him, but is able to eventually wear him down considerably in his god form, and then is able to push him out of the ring. Renzo fights next, and while he does have in interesting skills, he's no match against Trunks, and has knocked it pretty fast. Finally, Hit steps in. Trunks tries his best against Hit, but he's knocked out instantly. Then, in goes Vegeta in after Trunks, and since Trunks got taken it easily in, in the god form, he then transforms into Super Saiyan Blue to try and put up a, a better fight. This Vegeta is weaker than in, in Canon 2 since, since it's many years before, and since I believe Hit has the same battle power as he's always had, it's a lot easier for him. And when Vegeta does figure out Hit's timescape, it's still not enough for him to fare much better against Hit, and he's eventually knocked out. Next up is Gohan, and he tries his hardest going up against Hit. Since Gohan knows about Hit's timescape, and, and since Gohan is naturally smart to begin with, he's able to figure out when Hit is going to attack, and when he's going to counter. Gohan and Hit fight it out, with it seeming that Gohan has the advantage, due to him dodging Hit's timeskip attacks. But of course, as we know, Gohan tends to get very cocky when he's winning, which is exactly what he does here. Gohan begins to slack off since he believes that Hit is no longer a match for him. But there is one thing Gohan doesn't realise. It's that Hit has been getting stronger throughout the course of their fight. It begins to get to a point where Hit speeds up his attacks, and strays landing very powerful blows to Gohan's vitals. Gohan begins to get beaten up and so he decides to risk it and finish it off and fire full power Kamehameha wave at Hit. Hit catches the blast and is able to push it back at Gohan. As the blast is getting pushed back, Gohan uses his remaining energy to use instant transmission and teleport behind Hit. And with a powerful kick, he sends Hit flying into the Kamehameha wave. Unfortunately, the sheer pressure of the blast sends them both flying out of the ring, and the match ends in a draw. Now you may be wondering how Gohan now knows instant transmission. Well, in the time chamber, Cell noticed Goku using this technique, and decided to learn it for himself. Except, Gohan noticed Cell learned it, and since Gohan is extremely weary of Cell, and wants to keep one step, at, step up above him, Gohan begged his dad to teach him the technique as well. Now, even though the match is a draw, there is still one fighter left for Universe 7, Beerus. So this means that Universe 7 is the victor of the tournament. Kampa is enraged on how his universe could fail, and that Beerus was able to find a mortal that could overcome the both of them, which makes it much harder to be able to seek out the rest of the Super Dragon Balls. Of course, Xenos still arrives and is surprised to learn that Beerus is no longer the G.O.D. of Universe 7. Xenos says that something like changing G.O.D.s should have been something he was told about, and shouldn't just be done. So Zeno erases Beerus from existence, since he isn't needed any longer. The Saiyans along with Champa are now terrified about this, but Zeno suddenly changes moods and says he enjoyed the tournament, and that they should hold another one someday. Everybody agrees, and this time Goku doesn't go up to Zeno, since he saw for himself how dangerous he can be, and just lets him go, not wanting to get into, into any arguments with Cell and risk being destroyed. Champa takes the remaining warriors and makes his leave. Cell and the Saiyans make their way back to Earth, with the Saiyans still very weary of Cell. Cell then says that he's not impressed with the Saiyans have gotten a lot stronger from the training, but he says that they're not strong enough. All of them still lost in the tournament, so now they have to be punished. All of them losing, the cost will be com him completely destroying the planet. The Saiyans are in complete shock, and Cell says that, it, that this will be good motivation for them to make sure they don't screw up in future. 
Trunks pleads to Reese for him not to let this happen, but Reese says that now that Cell is a G.O.D., he can blow up as many planets as he wants, and Reese won't and can't interfere. Since words aren't working, the Saiyans launch themselves at Cell to stop him, but Cell grabs them all and uses instant transmission to Planet Namek. Before instantly returning to Earth and completely hakaiing it out of it existence, Saiyans sense the destruction of the world and, their all, and all of their friends and break down. Thunder puts back to the Saiyans and Gohan ex explodes in rage, transforming back into Super Saiyan Blue and launching himself at Cell. Cell easily knocks out Gohan and then tells the Saiyans that they better keep training, as he's going to stop by every few years to see the progress. He also tells them to not bother using the Dragon Balls to revive Earth, since he Hakaida away, and even the Dragon Balls can't undo a Hakai. Cell laughs maniacally and teleports away, leaving the Saiyans in defeat. In the last part, we left off with Cell Hakaiing Earth away as punishment for their performance in a tournament. But before he did this, he teleported Universe 7 team to Planet Namek so that they still live. Cell then lets the team know that he will drop by every few years to check in on their progress. After this, the God of Destruction leaves with Whis back to their planet, and the team are left in tears. All of their friends, all of their families, dead. After a while of complete silence, the team decide to walk around the planet. The Namekians are delighted to see Goku and Gohan again, but as for Vegeta, they are very hostile towards him because of how Vegeta acted during his first time on the planet. And as for Trunks, they don't know much about him, but as soon as they find out that he is related to Vegeta, they are equally as hostile towards him. The Namekians ask the group what happened, and the group explain everything. They offer the use of the Dragon Balls to the team, in order to restore Earth. But Gohan explains that the Earth was erased by the God of Destruction, so their Dragon Balls wouldn't be able to bring it back. After this, the Namekians still insist on the group using the Dragon Balls for whatever they want, Gohan is about to decline their offer, but Goku would butt in and suggest a wish for all Saiyan survivors throughout the universe to be brought to Namek. Everyone agrees that this is a good wish, so the Saiyans do just that. They gather the Dragon Balls, summon Purunga, and ask for all strong mortals of Universe 7 to be sent to Namek, replies the dragon, and several warriors emerge. These warriors are Broly, Paragus, Tarbal, and Turles. Goku would explain to the Saiyans that the reason that they are here is that they are needed in order to defeat the new god of destruction, Lord Cell, and avenge planet Earth. Goku would go on to further explain that he has a method for everyone to get stronger, the Super Saiyan God Ritual. The group would perform the ritual several times so that now all the Saiyans have access to Super Saiyan God. After this, the Saiyans would all hold on to Goku and would transport to King Kai's planet. King Kai would first of all not be willing to help take down a god because if Cell or Whis found out, King Kai would surely be Hakai'd. But after a while of begging and manipulation from Goku, King Kai would agree to train the Saiyans. The Saiyans would train with King Kai for around two years, and during this time, everyone can now use the Kaioken and the Spirit Bomb. The King Kai also taught the group a new technique, Metamoran Fusion. The whole group would gain an immense power boost after the training, except for Paragus, because he wouldn't partake in much of the training at all. The only thing he would learn is Kaioken times two at a stretch. Anything more than that would injure or maybe kill him, because of his old age. Also, Turles, Broly, and Tarbolt would all gain access to Super Saiyan Blue due to training in intense gravity, as well as training with the other Saiyans while they were in Super Saiyan Blue. Due to so many Saiyans training intensely for two years, I'll say that their powers are mostly around the same of where Goku and Vegeta were during the Tournament of Power. Tell us in the comment section what you think of these power level scalings, and if they should be changed. During this time, Whis has been keeping a sharp eye on the Saiyan team, all without Cell's notice and is delighted to see that not only are there more Saiyans in Universe 7, but that they are also nearly, maybe even equal, to Goku, Gohan, Vegeta, and Trunks. Anyways, back to the Saiyans. So after the two years on King Kai's planet, Broly, Paragus, Turles, and Tarbal are very accustomed to the other Saiyans, especially Tarbal, as they already knew his brother Vegeta quite well. So, when their training is complete, Goku recommends the team head off to Planet Yodra, as he remembered that they have far more techniques other than instant transmission. Oh, and I forgot to mention that Goku and Gohan would most likely have taught instant transmission to the other Saiyans in the group. So, it's settled. The Saiyans thank King Kai for their training, and within seconds, they teleport to Yardrat. The Saiyans make their way to Yardrat. Vegeta is of course confused on why they've arrived here, as what can the Yardrats, the Yardrats possibly do to increase their power? But Goku explains to him that they're not here to increase their power at all, but to instead learn a technique that'll be able to turn the tables in a fight against Cell, Forced Spirit Vision. With this technique, they'll be able to take away energy from people and be able to unfuse somebody. 
which will, will prove very useful against Cell. Their year is almost up and Cell is about to check on them. So only Goku is able to learn Force Spirit Fusion in time while the others watch. Once Goku has mastered and perfected the technique, the team returns to Namek and prepare for Cell's arrival. Cell shows up and says he's very impressed on how strong they've gotten, and it seems that they've got some new friends. However, it won't be enough against him, so they really should not try at all. But the same team aren't going to give up that easily, and Turles hands out fruit from the Tree of Might, and once all the Saints take a bite, they pair up immensely. This pair up especially impacts Broly, and the sudden burst of power makes him battle hungry, and he launches himself at Cell. Cell was not expecting a huge burst of energy, and is beaten around by Broly. Cell and Broly have a huge fight, and Gohan and Shrunk don't care about taking turns, and hop in to fight against Cell, all at once to finish this off once and for all. Surprisingly, Cell begins to get a massive disadvantage here, since Broly's power is continuously increasing, and fighting three Super Saiyan Blues all at once is kind of draining. So, Cell decides to go Super Saiyan Blue himself. He powers up, and a massive blue aura consumes Cell, and Cell has managed to access the Super Saiyan Blue power as well. And that he's completely out of everyone else's league, and he knows this. He is angry that these pathetic Saiyans had him resort into this power, so he launches a Hakai Ball at Broly, Gohan and Trunks. Paragus and Tarbal act fast and push the others out of the way, and are Hakai away instead. Broly watches his father disintegrate in front of him, and his, and his blood boils, he erupts in a deep blue light. Broly, without even knowing it, combines his legendary Super Saiyan form with Super Saiyan Blue and goes in for round 2 against Cell. Broly begins to beat on, beat on Cell savagely, and Cell is tired of all this and goes to hack Kai Broly away. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Gogeta instant transmissions behind Cell and knocks him away, saving Broly. Gogeta and Broly rush, and f rush in and fight off Cell together, and Cell notices that he's losing energy after every blow that Gogeta lands. What exactly is happening? Cell suddenly drops out of his blue form and demands to know what, what's going on. Gogeta does not give him, him an answer and simply unleash, un, unleashes spirit vision on Cell and yanks 17 and 18 right out of him. Imperfect Cell is left in a complete disbelief. He's imperfect. What the, he what the hell happened? How is this possible? All the fusion does is smile and, pre and prepare a, a big bang Kamehameha wave, saying this is for everybody and everything that Cell destroyed, and he hopes that his Cell rots in hell. Gogeta fires at the big bang Kamehameha wave and completely destroys Cell. The battle is finally won, but since there is no longer a god of destruction, Whis becomes inactive and isn't going to be very helpful. The Saiyans then gather the Namekian Dragon Balls once again and wish for the Super Dragon Balls to be brought to Namek. Their second wish is to be able to speak the language that Super Shenron listens to, and they don't have a third wish quite yet. Goku then summons Super Shenron and wishes for everybody and everything killed by Cell to be brought back just the way it was, and Super Shenron grants this, rebuilding Earth and bringing every everyone killed by Cell back to life. Paragus and Tarbal even come back, which makes Broly and Vegeta very happy. Super Shenron makes his leave, and the Saiyans use their third wish on Purunga to bring them back to Earth, where they can finally live in peace. Turles decides to go on his own path and return to his crew, but the other Saiyans stay on Earth and become Z-Fighters. With no new threats, the heroes all train peacefully. Trunks returns to the future and manages to take down the androids with ease living his life, finally, in peace. And once Goku Black shows up, he is no match for a Super Saiyan Blue Trunks, and the threat of Goku Black is stopped right then and there. Zamasu may be a problem, but since Master Roshi is still alive, he could probably teach Trunks the Mafuba and be able to seal Ma Zamasu away. In the present, there would, be, there would basically be no threat that would be a problem. Goten would still be born, and since he was born with his dad already possessing God Key, he'd be able to become a Super Saiyan God easily. This kind of irritates present Trunks, but Vegeta trains him and, 
and teach us how to become a god. Babidi and Dabura would get defeated with no effort, and if Frieza is eventually revived, even Tarba would be strong enough to take him down. So again, no difficulty. Goku doesn't want to suggest the tournament of power in this scenario either. Since the last time there was a, a universal tournament, the earth was completely destroyed, and, and almost for good. So, so Goku is just satisfied in training with Vegeta and Broly for now. Gohan would still not train as much, but he is still insanely powerful. And Pan would be both with God Key, kind of like Goten, and be able to go God as well. So with many Super Saiyan gods on Earth, I think it's safe to say our heroes will basically be able to face any dangers that come their way. And that is where we're going to leave this story off. I hope you guys enjoyed this series, as it was a lot of fun to collab with Omok to make it. And also, coming soon on his channel is going to be all the parts combined into a What If movie. So if you guys want to go check that out, click the link above to go to his channel. So, hope you guys enjoyed this series, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Till we meet again guys, see you later!